All right, let's go back here in just a moment to this, these equivalent conditions. Now we're wanting to show some, another pair of equivalent conditions. And the one we're going to show now is that G1 inverse G2 is in H. That's condition two. So let's verify that. That's condition two. And then we are trying to imply condition five. Okay. So let's, let's go back there. This is condition two, and this is condition five. All right, so in this exercise, we only need to show condition two implies condition five. Now, condition two says that G1 inverse G2 is in H, so that's a statement about group elements. But condition five is a statement about, about cosets. It's a statement about sets. Now, if you want to show that two sets are equal, you need to show one is contained in the other, and vice versa. So that's why I have these two here. These two are required to show these two sets are equal. So I'm going to show the left one is contained in the right one and vice versa. All right, so let's take an arbitrary element of HG1 inverse. And the strategy is I need to show that that's also in HG2 inverse. Okay, so here's an arbitrary element, H1G1 inverse, which is in HG1 inverse. So we're given that G1 inverse G2 is equal to H. Since we're given that G1 inverse G2 is an element of big H, I can set that element equal to uh, little h. All right. So let's take this and basically multiply both sides by G2 inverse, which I can call substitution. Then if I use associative and inverse and identity property, this G2 and this G2 inverse cancel each other. That inverse is kind of messy. Let's make it a little bit nicer. That should be an inverse. Okay. So that inverse will cancel this G2. And I just get G1 inverse equals HG2 inverse. All right. So then remember, I'm trying to show that this element here is also in HG2 inverse. But now since I have a way of expressing G1 inverse in terms of G2 inverse, I can go ahead and plug that in. H1 G1 inverse is equal to H1 times HG2 inverse. All right. So I use dissociative along with substitution. But H1 H is an element of big H. So that tells me H1 G1 inverse is an element of HG2 inverse. Okay, So that gives me what I need. That gives me so that, so th this completes the proof of one. Okay, so that's one. That's what I needed there. So a similar proof will show that H2G2 inverse is in HG1 inverse. You can kind of see that you just replace, um, uh, replace the ones with twos and vice versa, and you'll get the proof the other way. Right, so that would imply, so that implies that uh, HG2 inverse is contained in HG1 inverse. All right, so that way you get both of the conditions which we needed, and that completes the proof. It's not that long.